So in here, we're going to cover kind of patterns, practices. Um, we're going to kind of go over the deployment pipeline, consistency in the pipeline, automated testing at a high level, deployment strategies. Um, one of the things that um, came out of the uh, Phoenix project, but certainly we covered it extensively in the DevOps handbook, is this concept of the three ways of DevOps. Uh, the first way being um, really the continuous delivery, but it's about the flow. It's systems thinking about kind of um, a left to right flow, you know, a, a automated supply software delivery supply chain, the commit, the whole continuous delivery process. Um, in the previous class, we covered the second way, which is really about monitoring and feedbacks. And three, third is uh, continuous uh, learning, third way. But, uh, but we're really only focused here about the first way. So uh, just to kind of summarize from the last section, the difference between continuous integration, it, it is the integrator, it's the automated, it's the testing, uh, delivery is um, includes continuous integration, creates installable artifacts packages that can be deployed, and then continuous uh, deployment is actually the automated deployment of those kind of artifacts that are built and integrated. And, uh, you know, if we look at some kind of patterns and practices um, of the deployment strategies here, again, um, you know, the deployment pipeline, creating consistency. Uh, also, uh, the last thing in a later chapter uh, in this course, we are going to cover some of the zero downtime release stuff that we covered pretty extensively in the intro to DevOps. But in this course, we'll actually have some labs and we'll actually be um, practicing um, some kind of blue-green deploy and stuff like that. So there's the um, there's the um, um, Womack, which is the original kind of lean guru, one of the original lean authors. Um, you know the people that actually looked at this is lean manufacturing, but he has this kind of five steps to increase value and flow, uh, define uh, value precisely from the perspective of the end customer in terms of specific product with specific capabilities, off the specific price and time, uh, identify the entire value stream for each product or product family and eliminate waste, big part of uh, lean, eliminate waste, make the remaining value, creating steps flow, uh, design and provide what the customer wants only when the customer wants it. And uh, and I think the uh, pursue product perfection, right? That sounds like, oh my God, what, that's an odd thing to put there. But it, what it really is, is it kind of plays well with uh, Gene Kim's The Third Way, which is really just uh, the process is never done it's a virtuous cycle. Um, you're constantly, continually improving. Um, so, and then there's um, the um, humble Farley continuous delivery eight principles continuous delivery. Create a repeatable, reliable process for leasing software. Automate almost everything. Um, keep everything in version control. If it hurts, do it more frequently and bring the pain forward. Build the quality, and this is a big Deming thing, really. Uh, done, Dr. De Edward Deming, um, a famous agile consultant. Uh, done means released. Everybody was responsible for the delivery process. Uh, we'll see that more and more. You know, originally it was kind of dev and ops, like we're all responsible. Now we're starting to see the dev sec ops, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We're now security. Hey, we're all part of this. We're all responsible for the delivery part. It isn't like the security team, the network team. The, you know, there's DevOps for networking. There's now the dev sec ops. And, and at the end, it's all about continuous improvement. And, and you know, the anti-patterns are, you know, the, the places where you, you say, well, okay, you know, when should we be? Well, I mean, continuous delivery is a model that I think, I, I can't see any um, alternative to, to or any viable reason not to implement a continuous delivery pattern. I, I mean, there might be one out there, but but you know that, like, you the things are looking bad when you have incongruent tests and production environments. The tests are taking too long, too long. You have manual regressions, exception tests, very long lead times, very high technical debt. The services are slow and hard to change. You know, some of the stuff here that's kind of the consistent, um, you know, uh, considered practices, you know, build binaries once, same process defo for deployment at every stage, you know, smoke test your deployments. If anything fails, stop the line. Those are the gates that you saw in that, that kind of green red slide. Um, another thing we'll see when we get into GitHub is this concept of a pull request, right? Which is kind of a brilliant implementation of Git where in GitHub um, you basically make a commit and then you have, it's like a forcing function to collaborate, you know? And, and most people use this very effective to 
to uh, peer review code. In fact, some organizations actually use rotating alternative teams. So you want your peer reviewer to be somebody who isn't even on your team. And then um, you'll hear this over and over, code is committed to trunk. Um, some great resources. Um, we've talked about the continuous leader book. Um, in the last course, I've spent a fair a lot of time um, covering some of Tom Limoncelli's books, um, Practice of Cloud Administration, Designing Operating Large Systems. Um, he's got a tremendous um, body of work uh, that covers. Tom was an SRE at Google. And uh, and then, of course, the Effective DevOps, uh, Jennifer Davis and Katha Daniels. Um, really good stuff there as well.